So how do we use Pythagoras theorem to find the unknown length of right angled triangles? Well, there's basically only two situations you can ever be faced with. And if you get to know how to solve the step-by-step -step process of both situations with Pythagoras theorem, you're basically gonna be able to answer any question that can be sort of thrown at you um, in terms of finding unknown lengths of right angled triangles um, in Pythagoras theorem. So let's start with situation one. And that's where you're trying to find the hypotenuse. Now, you might remember from my previous video that the hypotenuse is the longest side of the right angled triangle. And the hypotenuse will always be opposite the right angle of the triangle. So the right angle will also always be between the two uh, shorter sides, okay? So basically the first step with this process that I recommend is to actually label the right angle triangle. Keep in mind that what we label as C is very, very important. The C has to be the hypotenuse. So the C has to be the longest side. So this here is gonna be my C. Over in the top right, by the way, here is just a remembrance of what Pythagoras theorem is. Um, so I'm going to color code the same. Uh, and then we're going to need to label the two shorter sides. Now, it does not matter which side you label as which here. I'm going to label A to be this one and B to be this one. All right, so that's step one. Step two, I often say, is actually write down Pythagoras theorem itself. So Pythagoras theorem is going to be C squared is equal to, we'll color code it here, uh, A squared plus B squared, uh, blue. So step three then is, well, substitute the information that you have into the formula. So we're looking for C, so we don't know what C is. So we're just gonna leave this as C squared. We do know what A is though, so a is gonna be five and we need to square that. So that's gonna be five squared. And we do know what B is. So B is gonna be 12. So that's gonna be 12 squared. Like I said, this will work if you labeled A to be 12 and B to be five, you end up with the same thing when we go and write it down. So the next step is to say, well, let's evaluate the right hand side here just to simplify things as we go. I mean, you can, do that a little bit later, but I like to simplify as we go. So five squared, that's gonna be 25. Added with 12 squared, which is 144. And then let's add them together. So our C squared is going to equal, uh, for the purpose of this, uh, I'm gonna put it back to green because that's what it's gonna be the area of that longer square, which is gonna be 169. Now what's really important here at this point is you've got what the area of this square, if we were to draw it out, what the area of that square is gonna be. What we're after though is what the side length of this is going to be. So what we need to do is, this is the reason why it says C squared. When we take that side length and square it, it gives us 169. So we actually need to work out what number multiplied by itself will equal 169. The other way of thinking of that is going, well, that side length is going to be equal to the square root of 169. All right, now it's at this point that you might want to leave it in third form if it can't be simplified easy. All right, and I'll talk about that in the next example. But this one can be simplified quite easily. So C is going to be equal to the square root of 169, which is going to be 13. Because 13 times itself will be 169. You can use a, uh, a calculator here um, to also put that in there and get your answer. So that's sort of the step-by-step -step on finding the hypotenuse of um, a right angle triangle when you've got the side lengths of the two shorter sides. Now you will need to know the short side length of the two shorter sides to be able to find this, but that's the step-by-step -step process that you follow. And as long as you follow that step-by-step -step process, you'll be able to find the side length of the hypotenuse every single time. So I guess we move on to situation two. What if we're not after the hypotenuse? What if we know the hypotenuse and instead we're after one of the shorter sides of the right angle triangle? Okay, so let's have a look at this then. 
All right, so let's start with step one. Step one is still the same. It's going to be um, labeled the triangle. Keep in mind that C has to be the longer side. C has to be the uh, hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, so it's going to be that six centimeters. Then we need to label A and B. And once again, it doesn't really matter where you label A and B. For the sake of this, I'm going to have A as the um, unknown side, B as the unknown side, known shorter side. So that's two centimeters. And then step three is to write out the formula. So the formula here says that C squared is going to be equal to A squared plus B squared uh, plus B squared. Now, at this point, we've got to look at the formula and go, what value are we actually after here? We're after A. We're not after um, C. So at the moment this formula is finding c squared, we want to find a squared, really. So what we need to do is we actually need to move this b squared to the other side of the formula. So if you think about this, well, how do you do that? Well, because it's adding b squared on this side, we need to subtract b squared to remove it from this side, but it's an equation. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we need to subtract b squared over here as well. And that'll leave us with a the same Pythagoras theorem formula but written so it's in terms of a. So on the right-hand side, we'll have a squared. So a squared. On the left-hand side, that'll be equal to c squared subtract b squared. Now if, hang on, blue for that color. Now if it was b that you're after, you'd be subtracting a squared from both sides. All right, that's the only difference it would be. But we can rewrite this formula out so it's in terms of a squared. So I'm just gonna do that. So a squared now equals c squared minus b squared. Now if you wanna avoid doing that rearranging part, a squared will always equal c squared minus b squared. So you can actually just remember this formula as a squared equals c squared minus b squared if you wish. But I'm a big fan of knowing how to rearrange formulas uh, because once you know how to rearrange formulas, you can like it really opens up what you can do with formulas. So once we've got it, so we've got a squared on its own here, we now need to substitute the information into our formula. So we don't know what a is. So we just leave that as a squared is going to be equal to. We do know what c is, c is six, and that's gonna be squared. And that's gonna be subtracted b squared, which is gonna be two. And now the next step will be to start evaluating that. So a squared will equal six squared, which is 36, subtract away, uh, 2 squared, which is 4, and we get that a squared is going to be equal to 36 take 4, which is 32. Now, at this point, we've got to remember that that's telling us that if we formed an area of a triangle, uh, sorry, of a triangle, of a square down here, that when we multiply a by itself, it equals 32. So it's the same situation that we had over here. To get a, we need to square root this side. So therefore, our a is going to be equal to, and just keeping it color coded just so it's easier to follow, but the square root of 32. Now this here is known as third form. So the square root of 32, if you were to go and look for a number that multiplies by itself to equal 32, it's a decimal. All right, so we might sometimes want to leave it in the most accurate form possible, similar to times that we might leave something like a fraction. All right, and the square root of 32 is the way to leave this in most um, accurate form. So this is third form. All right, something to note if you know about simpler third form, this isn't in simpler third form, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna leave third form as this. All right. But if you want to actually get this number as a decimal, then you'd need to put this into a calculator. All right, so therefore A is going to be equal to, and this is going to be an approximation because I'm going to need to round this value. Now we wouldn't leave things in simpler third form if, uh, so in third form if it's a nice number. That's something to really note here. It's going to be 5.66, 
Uh, and I should just say unit uh, centimeters because that's what my units are. And I'll go back and fix that in the previous question as well. We should indicate the units on our final answer. All right. So now that's the step by step of, I guess, finding the um, unknown side length of a right angled triangle. And to summarize, you can have basically two situations. You can either have the situation where you're trying to find the longer side, known as the hypotenuse, which is on the left here. And this is the step by step to follow. Or you can have finding the shorter side, which is uh, you know either shorter side, and here's the step by step to follow there. Something to note is you won't always get a perfect number like 13 or something like that, or 13.3, or you know a nice decimal. Sometimes it'll be a rounded number like this, which you might need to use the calculator to find. But there's also situations where we might want to leave this in the most accurate form possible, which is known as third form. So keep an eye out for that. Um, some questions might ask for this third form, which is what this here um, is you know, represented in. Really important to include the units in your final answer. So if you're after leaving it in third form like this, you would need to include the units after it on this step just here.